Part of the reason I went into research is the patients I encountered as a child neurologist. And one of the uh, most fascinating patients that really intrigued me was uh, a child with Rett syndrome. The reason I was intrigued is because these individuals start life as normal, healthy babies. They can learn everything a one-year-old baby can learn. They can use their hands, they might say a few words, and they crawl, and their balance is good. And then gradually, after their first and sometimes second birthday, they would lose all these skills. If they used to say a few words, they would lose them. If they used to use their hands, they would lose that. And instead, they'll constantly wring their hands. And then they'll gradually also lose social interaction skills. They would not look you straight in the face. They will not engage. And over time, they will also lose some motor abilities. And they will continue to uh, acquire new symptoms till their almost adolescence, by which time they have also some autonomic problems and breathing abnormality. I give you this big description, and this is just a few symptoms, to give you an idea that every part of the brain is affected in Rett syndrome. Rett syndrome is a sporadic disorder. There is one in every family, but because it, mo it always affects females, we were convinced that it must have a genetic root. And we and others have pursued identifying the Rett syndrome gene, and finally we found a gene in 1999. The gene encodes for a protein called methylcytosine binding protein 2. I call it MECP2 for short. And this protein turns out to be quite important. It's important because it is found in every cell in the brain, and particularly in neurons, it seems to be quite important to help the neurons respond anytime this neuron be engaged in action, uh, make neurotransmitters, and communicate with other cells. So basically, this is an essential protein for all brain cells' normal function. And this is part of the reason why Rett syndrome symptoms involve all parts of the brain, because when the protein is not uh, present in half of the cells, that's enough to create dysfunction of all brain cells. Fortunately, the disease is not degenerative, so these girls live typically a normal lifespan. But because of some autonomic problems, they occasionally have problems with the heart rhythm, and some of them might die prematurely as sudden uh, death as young adults. But in general, they can live a normal lifespan. Our oldest patients are in their 70s, so they can live a full life. Today, most of our treatments are symptomatic. Uh, the girls develop seizures, so you treat the seizures. The, the girls have many issues with eating and nutrition, and we give them nutritional support, physical therapy. Some of them have anxiety, so giving them medication for anxiety would help, sometimes medication to help them sleep. But as these girls get to be adults, they develop symptoms of Parkinsonism. They become rigid because the dopamine neurons don't work as well, so we give them some L-DOPA and that's also sometimes help. This is today the best course of treatment, is you treat the different symptoms, support the nutrition, keep them active, keep them in physical therapy, occupational therapy, so they can do as much as they can. I think that We've come a long way in understanding Rett syndrome. The question is, how long would it be to find a treatment that really affects most of the symptoms of Rett? And that's, of course, a question nobody can answer precisely. But I would say, given uh, the advances in the technology, given the animal models that we have that are excellent, given uh, all the different labs working on this syndrome, one would hope in the next few years there will be more effective treatment than necessarily just treating one symptom at a time. I acknowledge though, it is a challenge sometimes to think with a protein affects so many brain cells, you have to get it everywhere to really help all the symptoms. So we need to also acknowledge this challenge and hope that we can really find ways to make up for its loss.